made out of one meter cubes and gravity. And when you punch a tree, the tree falls down, right? As you do. So that would be do, right? <laughs> so a simulation can be, uh, in principle at least, as detailed or not detailed as you want. And we, we tend to think of them as being realistic, like matrix style, right? Trying to replicate reality. Um, but that's not the case. You can make a simulation of anything you feel like, right? You can make a simulation of dancing ham sandwiches. And as long as you've got consistent rules about how ham sandwiches dance, then you're good to go with your ham sandwich simulation. That is fantastic. And what do the ham sandwiches think of it? Yes. <laughs> There's fantastic. the rub. Mm -hmm. Instead of the, um, the tango, you would have the, the, the mayo, maybe? The mayo. <laughs> Cinco de mayo. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that's good. So then the question is, if uh, um, if we are living in it, in other words, which direction do we take this what the if question? And I think we could mm -hmm. start by saying, if we're in it, uh, how could we test to find it, not to, to figure out? How do we figure out whether we are in a simulation or mm -hmm. not? And then the biggest question mm -hmm. is, uh, who's running the simulation? You know. mm. So Matt, we, if we, yeah, if we I wanted, right, right, mm. we 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 sort of we ran through an earlier version of this once, uh, an earlier episode, and one thing we came up with was we would want to find tears in the in the rendering or the realism of the, the, of the rendering, right? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. yeah. So so and if then, we're has, taking as has anyone premise, ever seen one? <laughs> uh, yes, um, actually, I would. Uh, uh, this is not my original idea, but uh, there was a similar video that I saw that uh, likened to black holes to be those tears that um, oh. when, when we when we see the um, uh, something that's pulling all the light in in the universe mm -hmm. and having one of those events, that is actually the glitch. What we call a black hole is the. Okay. Skipping. All right. So that's a nice, yeah, that's, so that's a good launching point, actually. So if we're saying something like we live in a simulation or do we live in a simulation, we're taking as our hypothesis that all the things around us are, everything we see, everything we interact with are all a result of rules set down by the simulation designers, right? So the, whoever the simulation designers are decided we needed gravity and inertia, um, conservation of angular momentum, uh, cheese goes bad after a couple of days, right? This, uh, uh, every, everything we interact with, somebody had to sit down and set up a rule saying, this is the rule that governs this particular thing, right? Um, and because those are, those are all the rules we interact with, uh, there's a sense in which we can't imagine others, Right, we're we're stuck with what we right. got. Yeah. Correct. Right, um, and so yeah. so the um, the the looking for the glitch theory then goes something like this: that uh, if all the rules of our reality are computer code, computer code is never bug free. So if we spot yeah. a bug, uh, a failure of the code of reality around us, then that's a good reason to think that the laws of nature are just codes in a simulation. Why, why, do we, why do we assume that it has to be bug-free? There's no such thing as bug-free code. Well, that's extrapolating from our own experience, right? Um, uh, and you could make a good... What is it I think you could make a reason. What's if you loop? If you have a recursive loop... Oh, say that. Um, that what happens if you just do a simple code, uh, recursive loop, 10, grant all over rule, 20, yeah, go to 10? Yeah, so the argument, that's, that's I think code, the argument that's, would usually... Yeah, it's very simplistic. Oh, sure, but, yeah. Right. But the, so the argument would usually go, the more complex the code, the more, the more weird intersections you have, right? And you're, you're guaranteed mm -hmm. that something, right? Um, so if, uh, if the world around us is code, um, and we're assuming that the alien coders are not infallible, right? But like I said, like, as you pointed out, that's, right. that's an assumption that we make. Um, if you assume the simulation is perfect, then it's very hard to get traction. Can, can, I, can people... I give you an example of a glitch? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, when we first started this program, Kyle was American. Now he's his guardian. Don't know how that happened. It's a glitch. Yeah. 
That's true. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> I um I we did an episode on don't know, so I can I must be losing my mind. Let me explain. Let me explain so that I don't they don't think I'm uh, it's a it's a, it's a Mandela weirdo. effect. I'm telling you. We did a uh, an episode on Asgardia, which was that um, that space nation that that Russian oligarch created. Uh, oh, yeah, that right. He has a yeah he has a satellite up in space now, and what you do is when you become a citizen of, of Asgardia, you're able to upload um, something of yours digitally, like a, a photo of you of, of whatever that you want, and you're essentially putting yourself up into the country up in space. Well, I declared myself a citizen of Asgardia, and I uploaded. Um, our first episode of this podcast up there. So we're flying around. Oh, nice. We're spinning around the world wow. right now. But um, but yes, I am a dual citizen as we speak. I am. I I do share citizenship oh, with uh, Asgardia. That's very exciting. Yeah, that is so cool. Yeah. Uh, Wait, now, um, now, does this mean sure when you when you go through TS when you go through TSA at the airport now? Do you you have to show both passports or? I I I don't know. But what I, what I was hoping that I, I could get was like. For times when I'm speeding or, um, you know, I fail, I fail to stop at a stop sign, I'm hoping that I can pull out the um, diplomatic immunity thing that uh, I am, That's uh, a good idea. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm going to try yeah. it and see. see if, uh, my, well, having grown up in Washington, D.C., yeah, having grown up in Washington, D.C., I know that only works if, if they have, uh, you have to be near the consulate or the embassy. Where they, uh, or the, oh, yeah, I, right. guess they do. I never thought about that. Do you have diplomatic immunity everywhere? I guess you do. Yeah. Well, I'm hoping that since um, our our president is such buddy buddy with uh, the Russians and the our our president head of state is a Russian oligarch, that we'll get some um, special privileges out of it. Do you know how uh, Trump loves cool. Russia? Yes. Well, our, so, the, so our the, president may be evidence of the glitch. I'm not sure. Uh, you stole my life. Yeah. So the citizenship <laughs> change is actually actually brings up something important, which is that we update our simulations, right? Every now and then, World of Warcraft gets a new patch. Uh, yeah. And sometimes that's putting in new rules. Sometimes that's putting in new objects, but with the old rules. Um, and so if we're living in a simulation that's con currently being run, they might be running upgrades on us on any given day. Right. Ooh, and uh, and well, we, you talked well, to... Oh. <laughs> it's like a Windows update. Do we get rebooted every so often? Exactly. Exactly. Asgardia. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's right. So buttons. somebody put. Buttons. So in the new patch, um, there there is a you know a, they always have the um, the the file telling you all the things they changed in the patch, the change log. Mm -hmm. One of the lines in the change log is all Americans now change to Asgardians. Right. Very cool. Uh, it, plus, if, buttons, if we are getting upgrades, though, Steve. Yeah. Steve is in desperate need of a of an upgrade. Can we can we make that happen? Uh, simulation people. I, I'm already Steve 2.0, baby. I don't need any improvement. <laughs> my, my, my. Now, you Look, talked about the recursive Ooh. nature. Ooh. You talked about the recursive Ooh. nature, and that that's Which? like uh, when I watch The Sims, we'll, we'll play The Sims or something, right? Or any any game we play, and, and there are AI characters, because there's a deeper thing, which is or maybe we are an avatar of some, something else. Like it's a little more complicated. But just for the moment, we take the... Um, what do they call them? The non NPG non player non -NP characters, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um if so, if there was a glitch in the game, they don't react. For instance, um I was watching some people design a game and you know, when they check for bugs, one of the things is like, can the character uh get stuck in like a corner behind a fence or something in some weird way where now they can't get out. Right. Um the character doesn't he doesn't react so it's not, it's not like it knows that there's something unusual about that so updates right. bugs any of that stuff would mm -hmm. be seems to be invisible to the characters in other words for the characters well we could say this the fact that we don't see any bugs probably means that we are truly dumb like level 1 uh, automated we're the mobs. Auto, yeah. automatons in the game. We are not some sort of second level sentient aware of being in the game. Clearly, yeah. Uh, uh, my question would be uh, kind of similar or on that same point. When you're in a game, you know there are 
there are other things we assume, I guess, around you outside of the field of view that you can see. So how would that play out in, in this? Like if, if you, with the, what's continuing to go on outside of the, the view, the viewpoint. Yeah, Matt, you, yeah, you, so one you of had the, some very interesting thoughts. So this is, um, one of the problems with simulations just in general is that they're really resource intensive. Right, so it takes a lot of memory, takes a lot of computing power to run a simulation. So almost always, the first thing you do when you set up a simulation is you figure out what you can ignore. And one of the basic strategies is the one you just described, which is you only simulate the area right around the player and the stuff around the corner or behind where they can't see. You just don't bother simulating that. So you don't have to spend the CPU cycles and hog the memory for it. Right. Um, and that's essentially what makes a good video game from a bad video game is how successful they are at it, working around those sorts of problems. You're right, talking about it where it's procedurally generated. Whether it's procedurally oh, generated. Uh, or not. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, it doesn't have to be procedurally generated, right? It could already be there and you're just loading it into memory or something. Um, but if you're simulating a whole universe, our universe, um, that takes a lot of computing power. And it might be reasonable to assume that. They only simulate what they have to. Now, wasn't it sense. was it Niels Niels Bohr who suggested that because of the the weird observer effect or whatever in quantum mechanics mm -hmm. that if everyone stopped looking at the moon, eventually it would disappear. It would go. Away. Yeah. Well, Is that's that right. And that might wow. be that might be it's an a real guy, way a to. Guy. That's philosophy. Um, that's not computer science. Okay. <laughs> no, figuring out how to not simulate something is a really important part of computer science. So like, for instance, I wouldn't, if I were running our universe's simulation, I would not simulate the inside of Jupiter. Doesn't, right, doesn't interact right. with any observers. It's not part of the game. Totally not worth doing those calculations, right? Um, right? And if it's a dynamic kind of thing, as Philip was suggesting, that is where people are looking, that gets simulated, and where they're not looking doesn't get simulated, that might be something we might be able to mess with. So you literally couldn't look behind your own head because the minute you did, what was behind your head would be created, and what was in front of you would be destroyed. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's right. Wow, as you, that's deep. As, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's like yeah, I said, there's a window. Too, but, I mean, we're talking about clipping, by the way, when when you just get stuck in walls, like for example, <laughs> it's called clipping, and so it, it, that would be the glitch, right? So, but I never see, I never see anything like that in real life. You don't see, you don't see people just like somehow materializing halfway through a wall or something in real life, right? So that's so. A Philadelphia experience. A Philadelphia so experience. let's imagine though, you you wake up tomorrow morning and you do see someone clip through a wall. And you say, wow, that's weird. Right? Um, and then the next day, you see somebody else do it. And you notice it's always, I don't know, this green light always goes on right before the clipping occurs. Eventually, you'll probably just accept that clipping is a thing that happens. There's some law of nature you yeah. didn't know about. Right? Um, so trying to figure out what's a bug and what's just a feature that you don't know about yet turns out to be kind of tricky. I can make uh, – here's a sweeping statement that leaps us forward uh, even a little bit beyond some of the steps people go to automatically. And that is we can say that there are – let's just assume there are no bugs in this. No one's ever seen one, right? Let's say there isn't. Is there a way for us to test um, – some? is there a way for us to test this in which it doesn't rely on bugs? Are there any sort of known things about a simulation no. or a non-simulation that um, would be different? Or I don't. I can't think of anything that you would be able to test for in a simulation because everything would have already been either coded or designed or built for you. So you know where you you would be looking. I think is already pre -pant the What I think that wouldn't happen necessarily is that we would be able to figure that out it seems like they would have a some sort of mechanism by which we couldn't d discover that we were in a, a simulation you know some kind of well here's what firewall right here's what it is though in, in fact we've seen this like in the matrix and other stories about simulations that the character a character resisting 